friends, today we are going to do NMR practice problems part one. Let's get right to it. We're going to go over a bunch of practice problems. So the first question is how many signals would you expect on the hydrogen NMR? Always pay attention. And I'm going to very quickly draw it out. And the first thing we notice is, I hope I drilled into your brain, symmetry. So in this case, since we have a line of symmetry, we will only have one, two unique signals. So that's it. Two is our answer. Question number two asks us about the hydrogens here that are indicated by the arrow. I want you guys to notice is that this cannot be split by anything. It has to be a singlet because we have a hetero atom in the way. It cannot be split by anything else. So automatically we can get rid of two of the answer choices. Next up, we know that hydrogens that are attached to a carbon that is attached to a hetero atom will be in the hetero atom region. So we know that the chemical shift must be between three to five. So we can get rid of this last an this answer choice. And now we're stuck between B and C. And I'm going to explain how we can make this thought process a little bit easier. So as I mentioned, fluorine is the most electronegative, then we have oxygen, then we have nitrogen in this group. And with that, I said that fluorine is gonna be your five, nitrogen is gonna be your three, and oxygen is going to approximately be your four, right? And the higher the number, the more de-shielded it is. So if hydrogen is our, uh, excuse me, if oxygen is our four base mark, and OH will be a four. But if this hydrogen is one carbon away from the oxygen, we can say that that will be slightly more shielded. So with that logic, I would choose this as my answer. We have a very similar question up next, and we can see, I'll just draw one of these hydrogens, there are gonna be no neighbors on the left. We have one, two, three. These hydrogens are within bond length, uh, three bond lengths. There's three hydrogens plus one, gives us four, so that would be a quartet. Get rid of anything that's not a quartet. Cool, you're down to three. Next thing you have to, have to, have to, have to remember, this is what he's trying to trick you with. This hydrogen is attached to a carbon that's only attached to other carbons and hydrogens. Therefore, this is in the alkyl region, which is 0 to 2.5. So we're going to get rid of 3. As we talked about before, ketones are going to be at the high end of the alkyl region. It's going to be around a 2.5. It's definitely not a 1.0, because a 1.0 would be something like that. So we can safely say that this is our answer. When we move down here, we are going to see that it's the same molecule actually, we're just going the other way around. So these hydrogens will have two neighbors plus one, and that will give us three. So the answer has to be a triplet, we can go ahead and cross out everything that's not a triplet. And oh, look at that. We only have one possible answer choice. And I know you might be thinking, oh, Rosemary, this is a 1.0. It might, it's really low. That's okay because we're not directly next to the carbonyl. We're a little bit over, so that's okay. Alrighty. So now we have another one of the same kinds of questions. And we're looking at this hydrogen right here. So first thing we have to notice is, again, it is on the hetero atom, so it cannot be split, so it has to be a singlet. Bam, 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 bam. Look at that, you already got your answer. If you were down to two, let's say, and you had to find the chemical shift, we already know that this would be in the hetero atom region, and that is three to five. And we also know that the nitrogen is the least electronegative in that group. So the nitrogen is going to be approximately a 3.0, which is what we have. 
Next up, we're just asking for proton NMR and we only want number of signals. So I'm going to redraw this and please be familiar with this, I'm sorry, with this functional group. So let us draw this beautiful molecule. Oh, CH3. Now that we have that, we know that this is an ether. And we can start counting signals. So is there any symmetry? Think about it. No, unfortunately, there isn't. So we're going to go ahead. This one is one signal. Next up, I'll go here. We're doing the easiest ones first. This one is a completely different signal. This one is a complete. This one is a completely different signal. Now, I'm sure you guys are thinking double bond, diastereotopic or something. Well, it's not even that deep. One, it wouldn't be diastereotopic because the hydrogens are not on the same carbon. But also, they are just completely different. They're on opposite sides of the carbon. They're attached to different things. So you don't have to think about diastereotopic. Just think super straightforward. This one would be different. And this one would be different. Altogether, we have one, two, three, four, five, six signals. Yay. Next up, how many chemically distinct signals will we have? This is a fantastic question because you have to draw it out. And it looks like this. I drew the bromine going up instead of down. It doesn't matter. What you have to notice is we have a chiral center and we have a potential chiral center. Ding, 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 ding. This should set off alarm in your head. Blah, blah, blah. This should set off an alarm in your head saying diastereotopic. Let's just make sure that's the case. We do have a chiral group. Yes. We do have a potential chiral center. Yes. So every potential chiral center is going to be diastereotopic. Here we have one signal that's not a potential chiral center, so all of those are the same. Then we have signal number two here. And then this hydrogen and this one are going to be diastereotopic. So they will be two separate signals. So the answer here would be four distinct signals. Next up, we are looking for a triplet, a singlet, and a quartet only. And I'm going to draw these out right quick. Now that this was drawn, we are going to go ahead and count signals. Um, first thing is first, I'm going to count the number of signals because we can see that this question is asking for three signals only. What do we look for? First, if you said symmetry, you're absolutely right. So here we have a line of symmetry right down the middle. And here we have a line of symmetry right down the middle. Cool. Um, if you don't really see that for this one, these groups are symmetrical to each other. So I'm going to draw that again. And these two are symmetrical. And these two are symmetrical. And these two. Cool. Now that we've got all that, let's continue counting. So we have one signal here. That the signal I already circled. One here and one here. Hold up. Now you have a chiral center here, right? Actually, no. Uh, since you guys aren't here live for me to do this, I won't trick you. But a lot of people assume this is a chiral center and that's where they mess up because these two groups are symmetrical. Therefore, this is not a chiral center. So we're going to have one signal here, another one here and another one here and it is symmetrical with the other side here we have one two and then we have a chiral center 
because now there's not that line of symmetry. We have a potential chiral center here. And so we are going to have one more signal on this hydrogen, one here, and each of these will be their own signal. This is four, I mean five signals, so clearly C cannot be correct because it has much more than three. Over here we have our one hydrogen, two, and three. And then here we have our chiral center again. And potential chiral center, we have one right here. So we have one, two, three, four. That's already way too many. So we can cross out E. So now we're between A, B, and D. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these two so we can see a little bit better. All right. Between the three of these, now we're looking for... Actually, sorry, you can also get rid of A because I miscounted. Uh, one, two, three, four. So this has more than three signals, so you can also get rid of A. Awesome, so now we're left with a 50-50 chance. We're looking for a triplet, a singlet, and a quartet only. If we go right here, this hydrogen has two neighbors, so it is a triplet. These hydrogens right here have three neighbors, so they are a quartet, and this is a singlet. This checks out, but let's do the other one just in case. This one would still be a triplet, this one would still be a quartet, but this hydrogen now, one, two, three. So this would no longer be a singlet, it would be a triplet, so goodbye, answer choice D. B is our correct answer. Yay. Next one, we are going to do symmetry first, cut that baby right in half, yay. I'm going to draw one hydrogen per signal, just so you see. And yeah, that's it. These two are symmetrical to each other, and they're symmetrical to these two. So all together, you only have three signals. So get rid of seven signals, get rid of seven signals. Next thing we're going to do is count and see if they are singlets, doublets, triplets, or what. One, two, three, no neighbors. One, two, three, no neighbors. One, two, three, one, two, three. None of them have any neighbors, so they must all be singlets. Yay. 